Dear friends and church family, it was good touching base with most of you this week and to know that you are doing all well and keeping safe. I am encouraged to know that you are all keeping safe and reaching out and praying for one another. Thank you for your prayers and encouragement. Last Sunday, my family and I held a sort of heart of worship where we prayed for you, for your family, and for our world. Today I woke up with a song in my heart. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy name. This is a part of a song by Matt Rendiman called A Thousand, Ten Thousand Reasons. As I walked and prayed, I realized that the, although we are surrounded by grim news of death and hopelessness, yet there are so many reasons that we have to bless the God for. I bless and praise God for the world leaders who are working so hard to lead the nations through these troubled waters. Thank you for, for the healthy workers of all calibers who are putting their lives in danger and daily caring for others. Thank you for, for those who are working in food production to make sure we have enough food. Thank you for, for the police who are keeping us safe. Thank you for, for those working hard to find the cure for the COVID-19. Thank you, thank you for, for neighbors who are helping one another. For those who are working in criminal justice institutions like prisons to safeguard our communities. Well, I can go on and on. We have many reasons to bless the Lord for. Singing this song lifted my spirit and I felt better. Well, today is Palm Sunday, and you could have received a palm cross if you were me we were meeting in church. But although we are not receiving the palm crosses, still the cross is in your heart, my heart. This is the cross of Jesus that is the sign for our victory, for our faith. We celebrate the, the Palm Sunday to remember the turning point in the ministry of Jesus. Up until this time, Jesus had been withdrawing himself from public attention. He avoided anything that had int or public display. But here we see him making a public entry into Jerusalem where there is a huge crowd of people coming to celebrate the Passover. He even allows them to refer to him as the one who is coming in the name of the Lord. And that had a significant meaning to those who are hearing it. I invite you to read and reflect on this story quietly and prayerfully. In this drama, we see a community on the move longing for answers, longing for change. A community that is looking for a deliverer who could save them from their present gloomy existence. We see a city in turmoil. Here we find Jesus entering Jerusalem as a Passover pilgrim for the last time in his ministry on earth demonstrating how he is bringing the kingdom of God, but not exactly as they were expecting it. The Feast of Passover was both religious and political. It was a remembrance and a celebration of the deliverance of the children of Israel from their bondage. As Jews were under bondage at the time of Jesus, they were expecting their deliverer to come riding on a war horse 
not on a weak donkey on the way to the cross. So although they acclaimed him as the one coming in the name of the Lord, on that day, we will find out they were disappointed in the next few days as they realized this is somebody, somebody else. They wanted a conquering monarch, a military leader, not a peacemaker riding on a donkey on the way to the cross. Expectations can be stopped the vision. So for many, those who wanted a, a quick uh, solution rather than the resolution of the heart, Jesus was a disappointment in a culture that is worshipping power, celebrity, heroes. Jesus seems as if he is a failure. Yet power declines. Celebrity faints. Heroes do it do. Today the world is turned upside down. We are looking for answers. I keep on turning the news every now and then to hear the happening, and I find out whether they are any closer to finding the cure for this in destroyer virus. I guess this is a reminder that we don't have all the answers. It is like all what we considered important before the outbreak break of this virus has been put to pause as the world seeks survival. What endures really? What can sustain? Where is our answer? Jesus is more than a quick answer to prayer. He is not a quick solution to a political problem, but he is the life itself. He holds this side of life and the next. My prayer is for all those who are passing on from this life, that God in his mercy will reveal his love to them so that they can spend eternity with him. I am praying for the healing of those who have been infected by this virus. I am praying for the hurting who have lost their loved ones. And above all, I'm praying for the cure to be found. Some of us will be taken home to be with the Lord. Others will come through this. Either way, God wins. For what can separate us from the love of God? Not even death or coronavirus. We are forever held in his love. And at the end of the day, this coronavirus has changed the world. We don't know how church will look like when we are able to meet again. I leave you with this thought. When, I, when we lift our eyes to the hills, where does our help come from? Our help comes from the Lord, who is the maker of heaven and earth. You have to believe and hold on unto this, for his love endures forever. Amen.